Hey everybody and welcome to an introduction to the OpenAPI Connector. So in this video we will cover what the OpenAPI Connector is, how it works, how and when to use it, and finally we'll also show a demo showing the connector in action. First of all, the OpenAPI Connector is available in the Vocado Community Library. So if you haven't done it already, navigate to the Vocado Community Library and then go to the Custom Connectors section. Here you will find the OpenAPI Connector and then click on the Install Connector button at the top right corner. Once installed, it can be used just like any other connector, like in this example, Vocado Recipe. Here the OpenAPI Connector is used in the Actions section. And here's an example of using the OpenAPI Connector as a trigger. What's special about this is that it's a universal connector. So let me explain. So when you want to build a Vocado Recipe, so that's the cookbook icon on the left, and as part of that recipe, you want to connect to an application, say Salesforce, then what you need is a Salesforce connector. Same when you want to connect to Jira Cloud. What you need is a Jira connector. Same for Power BI, SAP, etc. I think you get the idea. And that's how it works for most of the connectors in our library. They have been built for one specific application. But that's not true for universal connectors. They have been built to allow users to connect to multiple different applications. So in theory, that could be a CRM, a database, an ERP system, etc. etc. The most popular universal connector in our library is the HTTP connector. It can be used to connect to almost any cloud application. However, it does require some technical skills and knowledge about the application API. And that is where the open API connector comes into play. It's like a next-gen universal connector. So let's first have a look at what open API is. So at a very high level, open API is a machine-readable specification that you can use to describe the API endpoints of an application. This is how an open API document looks like. By the way, these are also called Swagger files. This particular one, as you can see, comes in JSON format. By the way, YAML format is also very popular. It is not actually meant for humans to read and understand, but if you carefully have a look, you can see this one describes the API endpoints of a pet store application. And the first endpoint says it's for updating an existing pet. And further down, there are more endpoints for stuff like adding pets, removing pets, searching pets, and so on. And for every single endpoint, there is a schema definition for the HTTP requests and all the fields included. So you can see there is a lot of information in these files. And the good news is you don't have to read and understand this. This is exactly what the Open API connector is for. All right, so how does it work? Let's say we want to connect to an app, but there is no existing ready-to-use application connector. But there is an Open API document exactly for that application. Or in other words, the application supports OpenAPI. In that case, simply take the OpenAPI connector and plug in that document. The connector then automatically scans the document to learn about all the API endpoints. And with that, it can create all the input fields for, for triggers and actions and also automatically generate the data builds for the recipes. All right, enough talking. Let's jump into a demo to see this in action. So the goal is to show how to create a new connection to an application using the Open API Connector, and also how to use this in a recipe and call one of the available connector actions. So this is the recipe we will use. Right now, the Actions section is all empty, but the trigger is already configured. It's actually using the Salesforce connector, so whenever a new product gets created in Salesforce, a new recipe job starts. Other than that, nothing else is configured. Now, what we want to do is basically, whenever there is a new product in Salesforce, we want to create a pet record in our pet store application. That way, we keep the online store up to date and our customers can always see what's in stock. So, let's add a new action step to the recipe. Note that there is no pet store connector at all. Here we go with the Open API connector. It comes with a standard set of actions to create, delete, uh, update, get, as well as search records. And each application API endpoint gets automatically grouped into one of these actions. For our use case, we need the create record action since we want to quote unquote create a pet in the online store. Now we need to actually establish the connection to our pet store instance. And this is where we need to provide the open API document. In this case, we just provide the URL from where to download the document. Next is authentication. There is support for many standard authentication types including OAuth2. In this case, let's go with header authentication, 
since all we need to provide is an API key. The only mandatory field missing is the server URL. The rest of the fields are optional features, mainly to customize the user experience. So check out the Office docs to learn more about these advanced settings. Finally, let's establish the connection. That's it. The last step is configuring the action by mapping data received from Salesforce to the pet store. So it's asking me now to select the object to create. And by the way, this list is dynamically generated based on the content of the Open API document provided. So let's select pet since we want to create a new pet for every new product we get from Salesforce. Now we get all the pet specific input fields with the correct labels, data types, hints, etc. Same for the output fields. The output fields even include the example values. Again, and, and this is important to understand, it all comes from the open API document. The connector simply uses the information to generate the UI and the fields for you. And that is what makes the life of the person building the recipe so much easier. Okay, let's do some data mapping now. So we'll map the name of the product in Salesforce to the name for the new pet. Let's also map some other fields. And finally, we'll set the new pet's status to available. And I think that's it. And we are ready to give it a try. So for that, uh, let's simply start a test right from the recipe editor. And um, yeah, give me a second to create a new product in my Salesforce instance. All right, now let's check for a new event and uh, here we go. So we got a new product from the Salesforce trigger. In this case, it's a dog named uh, Bruce. And let's have a look at what the open API connector did. So it sent an HTTP POST request with all the headers required. And it also added like a payload in the right format. It also took care of parsing the HTTP response, so it did everything for us. No need for me to actually manually define the request or response schema or check the API documentation on how to pass these parameters. All I did was telling the Open API connector that I want to create a pet. That's it. And then the connector took care of all the technical stuff. Lastly, a couple of useful resources. So there is great documentation about the Open API connector on docs.wakata.com. I also encourage everyone to go to the Wakata community and install the connector. And uh, yeah, please, please reach out to our uh, support team if you encounter any issues.